Let's talk to Mike Ingram. He's the Chief Market Strategist for WH Ireland. Very good morning to you, Mike. Morning, Moose. Right, let's have a random walk around the world. Um, you're on your box. What do you got to say for the next six minutes? Um, well, I think when I was last here, which is, I think was a little over two weeks ago, I think I said brace for higher vol volatility and, uh, you know, boom. How do you like them apples? Yep. Um, here to stay for a while, I think. Um, you know, if you're looking at the current situation, um, you know, fundamentally, the big news is the current earnings season um, in the US are about 20% um, of the way through thus far, looking pretty good. Um, so uh, we're looking at about a 4% beat um, earnings growth of 21%. So fundamentals look okay. Um, obviously, over the, since we last spoke, we've had some slightly soggy Chinese uh, Chinese data. Probably no surprise. Yep. Lagged effect and all the trade stuff going on. But really, the big story I think is just is geopolitics. Whether it's you know what's going on or, or not with Brexit, Russia, Saudi Arabia, um, midterms. I said you know Trump would just keep this thing stoked up ahead of the midterms. It's precisely what he's going to do. I think any idea that China were going to very quickly climb down from um, uh, you know the trade war that they're in um, because Ch Trump's given him no face saving option basically is either knuckle under like you know, as Canada and Mexico have all, to a large extent already done that's not an option for China that's not an ch option for Chinese leadership and it was quite interesting to see the market's reaction to the measures that China announced Friday last week, so there was basically more government spending, easier credit conditions, specific support for the stock market, um, a bit more you know, cash on um, you know, infrastructure and so forth, a whole raft of things to basically say we are going to support um, the, the Chinese economy through this soft, soft, uh, soft spatch. Um, Shanghai, you can understand, rallied, rest of the world went, oh my goodness, they're digging in, they're digging in for the long term. Uh, and, you know, we've seen the market's instability, market, you know, downside continue through the start of this week. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's been choppy. Um, there has been downward pressure. I think that's going to continue into November because of all these different um, issues um, which are going to be boiling away. I mean, you know, we know, we know, for instance, when I haven't mentioned already, Italy. Yeah. So that, that's, yep. you know, we, we're expecting a... Um, you know, a rejection of um, a, a Eurozone budget today from the EU Commission. That's never happened before, but that sends us on a very dangerous path in terms of, you know, escalation, political rhetoric. The problem is, of course, is the government in Italy were elected to do a certain certain thing. One of those things was to spend more money on things like, you know, pensions and social care and so on and so forth. That remains very popular. There was a, there was a poll just over the weekend that suggested the government has near 60% sort of support on that. Um, so it's a question of like, well, who runs Italy? You know, which is a question which is being asked, uh, I'd have to say, across Europe. Yep. OK, let's go back to the UK market. Yep. OK, we've got some statistics. Morgan Stanley saying the UK is cheap on a number of barometers. Mm. We've got 38% of economists suggesting we go into recession in 2020. <laughs> right. OK, there's a portfolio manager, a guy giving investment advice. OK, the FTSE, bottom of its trading range around 7,000, there or thereabouts. Yeah. Um, can this break? Can this have another leg down any time soon? Well, it's possible. I mean... Um, possible or probable? <sighs> it, I mean, it all hinges on, on, on Brexit. I mean, the, the thing that worries me about the whole Brexit issue is that the outcome is now so polarised that it's inevitable that no matter what happens, there's going to be political blowback. So you, you can say, OK, um, Theresa May pushes through, you know, what seems to be on the table, which is, which is essentially customs union forever, as far as I can see. But, you know, other people obviously interpret it in a different way. Is there any way that Theresa May survives in that environment? I think probably not. So does that leave, do to, does that leave labour in? You know, do you think so, we're 95 percent of the way there? Well, even, if, well, even, if we are in, even if we are in Theresa May's old world, nothing's agreed until everything's agreed. So if, if not everything's been agreed, then nothing's been agreed. So I it's agree. nothing. Yeah. So and, you know, the thing is, it would be easy to it would have been very easy to secure an agreement a year ago. As I, I think as I made it precisely this point last time I was here. If you if you make all the concessions, and just go, well, we agree. Actually, we're not. This is not a negotiation. We're just here to say, yeah, we, it's, a, it's an unconditional you know, acceptance of your terms. Done. Would the market have applauded then? Well, we're probably at that time because they'd say, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a complete capitulation. So, you know, market rally. What I do know is if you look at the price action, to bring it back to the, to the market, if you look at the price action in UK equities at the moment, if you look at those stocks which are domestically exposed yep. versus the sort of exporters, so the so-called Brexit hedge basket, it hasn't been this low. The, the domestics have not been this low relative to the rest of the market since 
June 2016, okay. since the actual Great referendum result. I like that. Yeah. So that tells you where the, where the market thinks the risks lie. They lie to the downside. And if you look at the positioning in around sterling, it's a similar kind of picture. They're certainly positioning for higher volatility because, as I say, you know, we are reach, reaching a crunch point. And it seems to me, you know, no what, what happens is the pound will move from where we are. Because it's been moving in a relatively narrow trading range, actually. Um, the movement we have versus the euro is more down to euro weakness than, than anything else. Um, so is it going to trade 130, 131? Probably not. It's either going to go 10 cents better or 15 cents or whatever, yep. <laughs> weaker from where we are. Um, but the, the betting is it's probably got downside risk from where we are trading right now. Um, so that's that. In terms of it being cheap, well, you know, you'd have to argue that there's a, there's a premium on UK assets, a risk premium on UK assets at the moment, you know, and that's seen in the equity market. Um, and, um, you know, historically, the UK market was seen as a relatively cheap, relatively defensive uh, market, particularly for UK investors, you know, relatively high yield. I think it's got about 4.3% yep. gross on the, on the FTSE now. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and it will, and actually the FTSE will outperform if what we're seeing in broader markets, to bring it back to the bigger picture, is, is more of a fundamental shift from uh, um, a gro where a growth style of investing has been in, um, in vogue for the last 15 years, really, against the so-called value style. And there has just been like an inkling that, you know, maybe some of the, you know, the tech stuff is running out of steam, although I have to say the results are still looking pretty good. Um, but maybe in terms of the, the premium that the market's willing to pay for those sort of growth stories is diminishing. Any rotation to value is going to help the UK market. And as I said, the broader picture is hinting at that at the moment, though we've had a, quite a few false dawns over the course of 15 years, I have to say. OK, well, we ran out of time. My last question. <laughs> Let's see 100, 7,000. OK, higher or lower Christmas Eve? Um... I've got a feeling it's going to be higher, but it's a, it's a complete gut coin flip, and it's contingent on, you know, obviously what we learn from from Brexit. But uh, I mean, historically, we've tended to have a bit of a Santa rally. We haven't got much momentum going into October. As I said, November's problematic from an event risk perspective. So I think it could run lower, but then it could run higher from where we are. You know, okay. and oil hundred bucks by Christmas. Nah. I, 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 don't, I don't see it. Um, I think that you're already starting to see demand destruction, particularly in emerging markets, 80 plus. And I think, you know, quite frankly, the, display, the supply disruption, which is centred on, you know, um, Iran, as you, you understand, it's, it's bitten harder and it's bitten faster. But I think, as so often happens, a lot of this Iranian oil is going to find a way of getting back into the market, maybe via our good friends in Russia or India. On that note, Mike, we run out of time. Thank you very much indeed.